how do hierarchical deterministic wallets work? So welcome to this bonus episode of this really short series where we explain how cryptography in Bitcoin works. And we talked about the regular non-deterministic wallets in the past episode. Now we want to upgrade this a little bit and we're going to talk about BIP32, BIP39 and BIP44. And we explain how this works when you have the seed of 12 or 24 words and then how does your wallet keep generating new addresses. So let's dive into the screen share and have a look how this actually works from a technical perspective. When we talk about these hierarchical deterministic wallets, what basically happens is we have a seat and then we have a function and we're going to discuss how this works. We get an output when we put the seat into this function and this becomes a key. And then basically we just keep repeating, repeating, repeating. We have the function again, we get an output, we get a key and so on. And this allows us to get several private keys. Now, this is a humongous advantage because in non-deterministic wallets, we need to secure every private key individually. And then we need to add up the sums that of the UTXOs that are attached to private keys ourselves. With deterministic wallets, what basically happens is the wallet itself checks automatically a predetermined amount of private keys and their associated UTXOs. Once it finds a predetermined amount of private keys, for example, a hundred of them that does not have any UTXO associated with them, it's quite sure that this was the last generated one in the series and it just adds up all the remaining UTXOs from the prior private keys. So let's say, I don't know, you've generated eight new private keys. Well, it goes to number 108 and then it realizes, okay, there have been a hundred that have not had any UTXO associated with them. Okay, let's add those first eight together. And that's basically then how it creates a balance. And pretty much all the wallets that we're using today work similar, uh, work this way. Now we have two options for those deterministic wallets. The first one are so-called sequential wallets. They basically just use a SHA-256 function. Um, since, and you will see, we don't have all the possibilities that the second version, namely hierarchical deterministic or HD wallets have, these sequential wallets are not really used. Um, there's actually a way more sophisticated way in how this works today. So let's dive in and let's look at those three BIPs, Bitcoin improvement proposals, that actually allow for these hierarchical deterministic wallets to work seamlessly. The first one we're going to be discussing is BIP39, and that includes those famous mnemonic words that we all know. Now, what this basically does is, instead of a hexadecimal string as an input, it uses a seed. And the seed is 12 or mostly 24 words, and this is important out of a very specific word list with 2,048 possibilities. And I have linked up the GitHub uh, repo where you can find all the words, in this case in English. They go, for example, from the very first word, abandon, to the last word, sue. Now, what's also important is the more words you have, the more combinations, obviously, and the more secure all this is. For example, with 12 words, you have 128 bits. With 24 words, it's 256 bits. So obviously, the more words, the more bits. So this is obviously supposed to mean bits. Um, now, here's the key thing. The list is not allowed to be changed. Um, it has to be public and open source, and everyone has to agree on the same list. If you change it, it gets messed up and it doesn't work anymore. So Ledger, Tracio, all these wallets and keys use the same kind of list. And it even exists in different languages. You can check this out here if you want to. Now, the key thing is this. All the words get put in to one string, and if you want to, you can optionally salt it with a passphrase. This is optional. And now comes the, the key thing to create the master private key. And you use this PPKDF2 PPK uh, function, which basically means the password-based key derivation function number two. And it creates a 512-bit seed, which serves as the master private key. It does that with 2048 iterations. And the reason this is important is because this is so slow and it takes quite some time, it's very, very, very difficult to attack and quite intensive. 
and this is basically what this is all about. Now, always remember, the 12 or 24 words can completely restore the keys because it's basically a function where you plug it in and then it gets pushed through. So this is BIP39 and now let's go to the next step that was also integrated into getting HD wallets and that's BIP32 and that's basically the child key derivation. I linked up the, bit, uh, the GitHub repo again if you want to. Here we use a, a very pseudo random function and that is a very special function and we're gonna look into how this actually works because it allows us to generate keys from the BIP39 master key that we just generated before. This special function is the HMAC SHA512. Now what happens is, you can see this here. So we have this pseudo random number generator basically to generate uh, the mnemonic words. You can pick them, but you should never do this, right? Then you get basically your seed, let's say 512 bits. And now we have this special function here. So all this here is so far BIP39. Here we get to BIP32. And now we have this function where we split the 512 bits into a left and into a right part. And you can see this here. So this is the left part. And here we basically get the master private key out and out of this always the master public key. And then we have a chain code. Now, what is this all about? This is really, really interesting. Now, obviously from those private keys, we generate more private keys. And from there, the public keys. But what this function can do, and this is the very, very special part, you can generate public keys from existing public keys. So parent public keys can, can have children public keys, and you can go to other children public keys, but you cannot go backwards. And that is a very, very important part because this is key for exchanges. This is how you can generate a lot, a lot of public keys on an exchange, for example, without the exchange or anyone knowing necessarily the private key. It can generate it in the background, but it doesn't, it cannot do it on the, on the forward, on the front. And this is a very, very powerful tool. And now you have this master chain code, which basically works as a, a marker, for example, to mark generations, and you can do other things with it as well. So this is really, really powerful. If we draw this up, and this is just taken from, from the GitHub repository, um, basically, you have this master seed, and now you can start branching and you can start splitting. And you can see here the numbers as the versions and you can see the depth, the, the generations. Now remember, private keys can go downwards, public keys can go downwards, you can go from private key to public key, but you cannot go from public key to private key. And this is why these HD wallets are so powerful. Because for an exchange basically, it just needs one private key and it can control all these downward public keys and private keys. In a department basically, so let's say this is a department here on the top, these departments cannot sign to the other departments here, but the parent department could. And this is a very, very interesting and powerful tool that was integrated in Bitcoin with those HD wallets. And that works through very, very basic cryptography. Now the last BIP is BIP44 that was integrated for those HD wallets, and that's basic formatting. Um, this is not that relevant in cryptography. It's really mostly relevant for developers how to integrate a lot of that. If you're interested, I linked up the GitHub repo here. So this is a very brief kind of bonus episode here explaining hierarchical deterministic wallets and their power in only needing one key and being able to kind of control a lot downstream. If this stuff confuses you, you have been missing a lot of the basic parts that we discussed in cryptography. If you like this, give me a thumbs up. If you want to be notified for more episodes, please subscribe to the channel. And I'm looking forward to seeing you at the next video. Yours truly, Julian.